Let's get to it. Tiny bit of salt. And the apples with cinnamon and sugar. Just a tiny bit of sugar. We'll go on the front here. This is for Channing, but you can watch. See, I've sliced them rather thinly, but I didn't cook them long. I want them, I want them tender, but not, uh, not overdone, right? Whoops, forgot to save one. You remember why I'm doing that, don't you? Because I'm not very smart, that's why. And I can't remember when we, uh, when we close our time together. I can't remember what all I have on the counter. Okay, the big secret fold, which is no longer a secret, which you can do anytime you want, you see? Fold them over the top. Now, if you, the first time you try this, you wind up with a mess. Don't become discouraged. It's all right. Because the first time I did it, I had an awful mess, too. There we go. There, the three of them already. Let's make a potato filling now for an omelet. This is one of my favorites. It's a potato, a French potato and garlic omelet. So my pan is hot, and into the pan I'm going to put a bit of butter, just a smidgen, a little bit of oil. I'm not putting in eggs in this one. I'm cooking potatoes in this pan. I have some new potatoes. You remember what these looked like. Here, I'll show you a couple. Ah, oh, here we are. Before they're cooked, they're, they're generally very red like this. Lovely color. Or sometimes you can find them, they're a little bit brown, and they're still called a new potato. They're very, just very, very small potatoes and of this red variety. Simmer these for a bit in water until they're tender, and then cut them up into big chunks like this, and in they go to the pan. This is a filling I'm making, right? All right. Uh, what is that? Four or five uh, potatoes per serving. And we'll need some bacon. And I've already cooked my bacon. This is one slice of bacon, all ready to go. And we need a green onion chopped up. Well, I hope we can find some room around here. This is getting to be serious. Remember now, when you cut, keep those fingers bent under, will you? So don't stick them out. I have to tell you something funny. I went to a book signing the other day. I was very flattered to be asked by a book company to come and sign some books for them, so I did, and I walked into the shop. Oh, there must have been 500 people there, and I waved hello, and somebody yelled, keep your fingers bent under. <laughs> I was tickled, so when I was writing, I, even, even when I'm writing, I remember that. Green onion, potato, a little bit of, of um, bacon, and now the garlic. Heavenly flavors, so good. You get the recipe for this one? Nothing to it. You can figure out some other variation that you think might be better than mine. That's all right with me. It's going to be a little strong. You're right. You're right. Now, I'm going to put in some olive oil just for flavoring here. Just a smidgen, about a half tablespoon. And we'll toss that about. Now, you remember how to toss things? You hold the pan thusly so the food will slide forward, and then you give it a flip. You see? Now, that's another trick that you'll have to... Uh, <laughs> You'll have to practice a bit. It's all right. Don't become distressed if you throw potatoes all over the walls. Do it when your mother-in-law isn't around, okay? What does she know? Well, actually, my mother-in-law is a very good cook. There we are. There's the filling. Pan goes back in the stove. I'm using this one frying pan over and over again because it's good and hot. And you notice I'm holding on to the handle, right? And you know what? It's just burning me to death. No, it's not. It's not bad at all. Okay. Now, three more eggs. I don't have to keep repeating the fact that they're at room temperature, all that sort of thing, right? But it is important. Eggs will blend much better. Well, how, what do you, how do you keep them at room temperature? I keep a dozen on the counter all the time. And the rest I keep in the refrigerator. In our house, we eat up a dozen eggs in a week. I'm sure you do, too. Good Lord, there are four of us. I bet we eat up more than that. But I never feed the boys eggs for breakfast. Never. And uh, my wife and I simply have... Uh, have a big grainy toast and that sort of thing for breakfast and a little black coffee. So we save our egg eating for uh, dishes in which I think eggs are more appropriate. I love poached eggs. I love fried eggs. I love all of those things. But good Lord, you can just eat so many eggs that you'll kill yourself. We are an egg and bacon crowd, aren't we? Okay, into the pan goes the butter, a little bit of peanut oil. See how that's uh, it's almost too hot. See that? Almost too hot. Now watch, as soon as it subsides, as soon as it stops bubbling and foaming, that means the pan is ready for your, for your egg mixture. I say egg mixture because you remember to put in two tablespoons of water for each three eggs. And if you want to cut this down to a two-egg omelet, fine, do so. Use a smaller pan. This size, for instance, would be perfect. You see, that's a, uh, what is it? That's a uh, eight-inch, and this is a 10-inch pan. 
I, about time I finally told you the size of the pan, isn't it? <laughs> well, you forget things now, and that's okay. Now, here comes my favorite one. First time I had a potato omelet, a French potato omelet was at a restaurant called uh, the um, Brasserie Pittsburgh. It's in the downstairs basement in Seattle. Uh, it's been there for, oh, I don't know, something like uh, 85, 90 years, an old, old tile restaurant. And it's been operating every day throughout all that time. And the new French, uh, the new owner is a Frenchman by the name of uh, Francois Cassel. And he makes lovely omelets for lunch. He makes a great big one, it's this big around, and then as you come by, he cuts off a big chunk for you. It's terrific. Okay, whoops, forgot the salt and pepper. For our potato-filled omelet with a little bit of bacon. Did you get the filling? Bacon, potato, uh, green onion, garlic, a little bit of olive oil, you see? And we're ready to go. Let's put it on. There. You're right. This is not a, what you call a light omelet. This is going to be uh, heavy as can be, but it'll be beautiful on the plate and absolutely delicious to eat. Here we go. Slide it out. Oh, you're just waiting for me to blow this, aren't you? I don't think that's very nice at all. After all, here we put a potato on top so we'll remember what we have. There. Running out of space on the counter. You've never seen me do that, have you? No, that's common all the time. Always running out. There we go. That looks a little drab. Let's put some parsley on it. You know, presentation is just so important. You really need to, to make them look attractive, and a little parsley will be great. Are you ready for another one? Let's keep it up. More eggs. This one's going to surprise you because it's so silly. It's almost, well, it's so simple. It's almost silly. Uh, and I'll tell you about it as we make it. It'll become one of your favorites, and it's the kind of thing you can make uh, late at night when you, you think you have nothing in the house, but you'll always have these ingredients. Okay, two ounces of, of uh, excuse me, two tablespoons of water. There we go. Pan's hot. So now we'll throw in our butter. And a bit of peanut oil so that it doesn't burn. As soon as it stops bubbling. You're getting this down pat now? Good. As soon as it stops bubbling, well, we'll throw in the egg. Stop bubbling. <laughs> Maybe it won't stop bubbling. There we go. Okay. Now, the secret to having fun with omelets is to uh, remember that when you go clean out the refrigerator, uh, absolutely anything goes. You can put all sorts of lovely things in these omelets. Anything you can possibly imagine in your kitchen. Leftover beef stew makes a great omelet. There we go. Any kind of leftover sauce that you have in the house. All sorts of melt of uh, cheeses that will that you can grate up. Generally, the older the better. That's my theory. I'm going to use some freshly grated cheese. Please don't buy don't buy grated cheese in those little paper containers. It just tastes so awful. There's no taste at all other than paper. Grate your own cheese for a Parmesan or a good Romano. Always have some on hand. Now, the ingredients for this one should tickle you because it's very, very simple. If you are a high-class cook and you prefer for this one to use ricotta rather than cottage cheese, then you go right ahead. I'm turning this down a bit there. But I'm going to use cottage cheese that I've drained in a colander, you see, so it isn't quite so wet. And I'm going to make a tomato and cheese omelet. This really is going to look like a lasagna covered with eggs instead of noodle, because I'm going to use the cheese first, you see? And then we'll add some good spaghetti sauce, preferably your own, of course. There. Oh, this is going to be terrific. And we need a little bit of oregano, just a smidgen. There we go. And some salt and pepper. Very little salt, lots and lots of pepper. You know, if you use more pepper, you can get by with using less salt. There we have it. And, of course, finally, the grated cheese. There we go. All right. And let's fold that one. Whoops. Come on out of the pan. You know what? I think we've just had the disastrous moment you're waiting for. This one is going to stick. So, you know, loosen him up a bit. There we go. The, the moisture... On the, from the front here is really, there I've got him. What have I done? I've loosened the omelet up so that he'll slide forward in the pan a bit, you see? 
so I can get him out because the cheese is very heavy and it was just going to, the cheese was going to fall off the omelet. But now I think we've got him. Ha <laughs> ha! See, we did it. Great. There it is. Now we need to color that with a bit of sauce on the top. And don't run it all over the place. Just put a nice straight line on it so that it looks a little more aesthetic, perhaps, huh? And some cheese and perhaps a sprig of parsley. Is there room out there for more? Oh, these are good. These are just great. These are just great. There. Now, what is the history of such a thing? I don't know. Uh, probably, um, the French are probably right in claiming that it's theirs, though uh, such a dish was common in, uh, uh, in Greece. You'll find uh, that kind of, of cooking going on. And in, in Italy, you know, omelets are very, very common. First time I had Italian, a real Italian dinner, uh, we had uh, pasta first, lots and lots of pasta. Then we had an omelet right in the middle of the meal. And then for, for uh, dessert, we had a beautiful green salad. That's the way it's done in Italy. And it's a good practice. You can get rid of the, uh, the sugar in your diet and uh, a lot of the butter fat that we use in desserts. You won't need them at all. So the old, um, the old French omelet is, um, is really very universal in our time and certainly common in our country. I would suggest the following kind of menu. First of all, for dinner, if you can have a light supper for an evening, why please remember that you need to uh, serve a good salad along with your omelet. There we go. I'm going to put a slice of tomato on this. You know, I should put a slice of tomato on my uh, cheese and tomato omelet too. Anything to deck this thing out and give it a little more color. There, that looks better, doesn't it? There we go. Okay. Anyhow, your meal will consist simply of a lovely salad, a first-class omelet, and a good glass of wine. And when you're ready to go, you invite your friends in, and you can have a field day. Red wine will go fine with an omelet, or white wine will go fine. Depends on what you have inside, and finally, it just depends on your taste. Don't let anybody ever tell you that a certain wine goes with a certain food. That's just not true. If it tastes good to you, then remember, you're the critic, and you're all set. That should do us. That should be a nice meal. A good salad. Oh, here's some zucchini, too. You can try it. I have stuff all over the place. Try chopping up zucchini, sautéing it in a bit of butter, and then adding some lemon juice and folding that into an uh, omelet. It's murder. Absolutely delicious. So there you go. We have a glass of wine and a salad for dinner, and the bulk of the meal are beautiful omelets. I prepared five for you today, and I gave you some basic rules. Exit room temperature. Good pan. No milk in the eggs. Don't put salt in the eggs. Put it in later. Use water in the eggs and have a good time. Butter in the pan just for flavoring. Tiny bit of oil so the butter doesn't burn. And then it'll lubricate the pan properly and flavor the omelet. I prepared a Swiss cheese. And uh, what's in there? Swiss cheese and sour cream. A mushroom omelet. An apple omelet. A potato and garlic omelet. And finally, a cheapy but goody, a cheese-filled omelet with uh, spaghetti sauce. And that's the way it looks. Uh, for a fine meal. The next time we're together, uh, we'll give you some more kitchen hints, uh, some more gimmicks that can use at the table, because I want you to march into the table with arrogance and, and, a, and a bit of relaxation in your heart. You shouldn't have to hustle when you cook. Enjoy yourself. Until we cook together again, then, this is the Frugal Gourmet. I bid you peace. Bye-bye.